looking towards the booster end of the rocket where the fins and motor mount will be installed. We're going to want to scuff the inside and the outside of the fin area, the rear of the tube. You can see I've already pre-scuffed some of this with some 80 grit. You can obviously see the area where it was scuffed and the area that has yet to be scuffed. Um, give yourself about a half inch on each side of the fins on the inside as well as the outside. You can quickly see the difference between sand, sanded versus non-sanded. Make sure that's taken all the way down the fin on the outside as well as the inside. After the booster tube is scuffed up and ready to go, we're going to want to look at the motor mount and the centering rings. This comes with a 75 millimeter motor mount. And this piece has not been touched yet. There's a little bit of material that needs to get cleaned up here. We'll take a flat sander to that, kind of cut off that tip a little bit, scuff the entire outside of this motor mount, as well as the centering rings. Since they are fiberglass, we're going to need to scuff those as well. You can just lay them on a flat surface. You can take a little bit of scuffing on the exterior, as well as the centering rings themselves. Just go in, scuff all around both sides, inside out. The goal is not to remove material, it's just to prep it for bonding. As you're scuffing the motor mount, you'll notice the kit contains two centering rings. We're looking at the forward end of the motor mount tube. Specifically, this is a spot where the centering ring would end right where the slot ends. You can put the centering ring directly up to the end of the fin slot, which will help trap epoxy to glue the fins in place. So you may want to glue your one inch wide strap, which comes with the kit in front of the centering ring exclusively, or you may actually want to send it through the centering ring as well. If you do choose to go that route, again, a couple different ways of doing it, you can file away a notch of the centering ring and pass the one inch flat Kevlar strap through the centering to get more grab on the motor mount. After the bridle was glued to the motor mount and I was all set to drop the motor mount into the fin cam, the motor mount was dropped in and it was tacked in place and the fins were also tacked in place with five minute epoxy. You can see the motor mount was glued from the top as well. Now we're going to move on to injecting some epoxy. We're going to use this spot here and this spot here. We're going to drill those holes out and inject the internal fillets on both fins. Since the Punisher 4 fins are a little bit longer than 12 inches, I'm just going to drill the holes at 6 inches, pretty much splitting the middle around an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch, depends on what type of epoxy you want to send in there, whether it be West Systems amended with chopped carbon fiber or West Systems with milled fiberglass, things of that nature. This is really just kind of giving you a baseline of where to drill the holes and how to do the injections. You'll also find a lot of these referenced on the rocketry forum as well. Just going to drill a couple of pilot holes and then enlarge them to about an eighth of an inch. You can also drill these holes before the fins go in. Either way, whatever your preference is. In the rear of the rocket, there was epoxy around the rear centering ring put in place. You also want to put some on the top of the centering ring. You can also drill a hole right above it or right below it and also inject in. Depends on the type of epoxy you like to use. 
In this case, I might use some regular West systems, use those same injection points and let it run to where the centering ring is at the top or run to the bottom because this is already sealed off here as well as the top. I'm trying to eliminate as many holes as possible. I should be able to use six total holes for doing about 12 different injections. Another helpful hint when you're doing epoxy injections, the gap between where the fin slot is and where the beveled fin actually sits, you can build that area up with tape to kind of seal that in. Then anything that you inject into the ejection holes and then it runs down the airframe toward the rear, it'll kind of pull up nicely at the rear if you have it taped off well. Alright, so here's an internal injection that was just done. I injected it in one of those holes that was separated out between the length of the fin, about six inches from the front, six inches from the rear. I also put a level on there to make sure it's pooling level inside the tube and just put a bunch of blue tape to seal uh, the entire root length of the fin as well while it cures. Uh, since this is West Systems Epoxy, I'll let this sit for at least eight hours before I move it. Now that all the internal injections are done, I just peeled the tape off. Uh, some actually will stick a little bit there. You can see where the injection point was right there. No big deal. I'm going to pull the tape off there and also begin to scuff the area where the external fillets will go. From the front all the way to the rear of the fin. And then we'll mask that area off as well. quick example of how to get that area scuffed. We'll also have to mark where our fillets will go with a rounding tool of some sort. One trick you can use is putting some magic marker on the front of a PVC pipe. Mark on the tube where it would go. Same thing with a large tongue depressor. Mark the top of it with magic marker all around run it against where the fin will, the fin fillet will go, and it'll actually transfer some of the ink onto the tube. You can see where to mask off. I'll show you an example of that on this tube. You can lightly see where the ink transferred. So if I were to round off a fillet with this tool, that's where the epoxy would be, whether it be epoxy, JB Weld, whatever glue you'd like to use for the exterior fillets. Now I'll go ahead and mask the area off based on where those markings are. Depending upon where that injection hole was, you'll likely be covering that again with the external fillet as well. I'll probably end up doing some additional masking uh, right at the rear of the fin as well as right at the front of the fin just for convenience of not making a large mess. And we'll just mix up some, I think for this one I'm going to use JB Weld and apply that fillet. Um, once I pull the JB weld where it's supposed to go, I use the tongue depressor 
starting from the rear at like a 45 degree angle, sweep it back, get rid of any of the excess, and then as soon as I see that the fillet is formed the way I want, I'll pull the masking tape off. You can feather it a little bit more by hand, but I really don't think that's necessary for most applications. If you get it rounded off to begin with, you can simply remove the tape and you're left with a nice clean fillet. Just remember to level out the fin can as to let both sets of fillets dry because typically you'll do one on each side between two fins at any given time. So once the fillets are done, this will pretty much complete this build. Okay, we've masked off the area in preparation for JB Weld fillets. Went in and scuffed the area with 60 grit paper and masking taped it off right where the marker was from the tongue depressor. And I'm going to brush some mixed JB Weld on the seam and then pool it on there as well. Alright, I've got all the JB Weld mixed. I have some paper towels handy. I'll take a regular uh, epoxy shot brush. I'm going to start by just working some of this JB Weld into the area where the fillet's actually going to go. I'm going to do that on both sides. This spreads somewhat evenly, even though JP Weld is really thick. If you're using West Systems or something else, obviously this will wet out a lot faster. On this particular build, I decided to use JB Weld. And if you were to form these fillets by hand, they would probably look pretty gnarly with JB Weld alone. That's why we're going to use the large tongue depressor to kind of pull it at an angle to form that rounded shape. I'll pause and do the other side as well. Now that I've brushed that through, I'm going to take decent size dollops of JB Weld start working from the front of the fin to the back of the fin. Just kind of tapping it down into a fillet shape. And I'm purposely putting on more than is actually needed. And we'll remove the excess here shortly. Okay, now that the fillets are laid down, I'm going to shape them. There's going to be a lot of excess JB Weld in this case. I'm going to have some paper towels at the ready, as well as a extra stick if need be. Quite a bit of excess there. I'm just going to take this tape, remove the excess right away on the top and the bottom. I have a little bit of cleanup to do, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Same thing on the other side.
shape it slowly, pull it off the end. Pull the tape as quick as reasonably possible. I'm going to go through and pull the rest of the tape as well to clean off as much of the excess epoxy as possible. And right at the end with a clean glove on, I'll, we'll do some additional cleanup around the front and the rear of the fins once I get the rest of this tape off as well. Again, just a little bit of shaping by hand. Cleans it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to finish. Front looks good on both sides. Just gonna level that to make sure it's straight. And that should be good to uh, good to cure. And I won't touch these or do anything with these for at least 24 hours. And I'll do the other two fillet sets, drill and tap the holes for the rail guides. And that's pretty much the booster section complete.